Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all well. Today you're joining me from the Berlin Epre at Tempelhof. Uh, we're going to do a half-length race here today, so 22-23 minutes. I'm in the Panasonic Jag again, uh, and my teammate Mitch Evans plays second, as you can see, in qualifying, so second and third there. Uh, let's get this underway and see how we go. I would like to chat about this, the Epre, this circuit, um, and some of the other things that are happening in our factor at the moment uh, through the monthly updates. So let's get this underway, have a bit of a chat. And see how we go. Hopefully, I can hang with uh, Massa here. I have a bad feeling though that I'm going to get swamped in this first corner. I've gone wide. Don't want to tap anybody here. Um, it's it's quite warm here at the moment. I've, I'm running real weather. And uh, qualifying was uh, 32 degrees, so I had to drop the engine power, so I'm only running 200 here, as opposed to the 250 I was running at Monaco last race. Um, let's see how we go though. It, it does mean that I can actually hit my braking markers a little bit better as I completely overrun my braking marker. Um, Mitch has already gone to the lead. So let's at least see if we can make it a jag 1-2 and perform better here than the team did in the actual race, which was 12th and a DNF. The more I drive this car, the more that I um, the more I enjoy it and the more I think this is actually my favourite car, um, official car. Um, from Studio 397 at the moment um, and I say that because not because it's a, a Formula E car um, but because it's I think it feels to me like it's a level up from all the other cars they've got at the moment in the way that it actually communicates with you so um, you can feel everything that the car's doing you can feel everything that the rear of the car is doing which is really important in this car because it is so tail happy and rear heavy um, and you get it all fed to you through the wheel perfectly, so I'm really enjoying driving it, and especially at a high speed flowing and technical cornered track like Temple Off, so um, yeah, just enjoying driving it at the moment, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an awesome car. Um, Temple Off, let's have a little bit of a chat about Temple Off, obviously it's a very iconic site for good and bad reasons. Um, Temple Off Airport was first opened in uh, 1927 uh, and then in the early 30s because of the onset of well, obviously the possibility of upcoming war it was heavily worked on um, by German forces and uh, during the war it actually became a, uh, a bomber manufacturing site so uh, it was also the site of uh, an SS concentration camp um, so not a great, not a great start to its history. Um, and then during the division of um, Berlin after the Second World War, it kind of became a symbol of hope for Germans trying to um, kind of escape to freedom from the um, the onset of Russian or rather. Soviet Germany um, and uh, it was also the um, not the Allied but you know the Western Forces kind of base of operations 1948-1949 um, um, to actually fly supplies in for the starving citizens of Germany at the time so it's kind of had a Not a great start to its life. Um, after uh, after the the wall came down in 1990, it, it went back to being a um, just a, a public airport, and then that was uh, that was closed in uh, 2008. And from that point on, it's it's been a um, convention, an exhibition centre. There's a park there, um, and then in 2015. Um, First, first layout for um, racing was was unveiled or opened 2015-2016, uh, 
Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, Tempelhof at that point became a refugee camp. So that circuit, uh, as it was known in 2015, 2016, no longer used. Um, that layout and the 2017 onward layout is the one that we're racing on now. Uh, and there were two completely different completely different circuits, not even recognisable as the same, so you know, I think the only thing they shared was the main straight. I might even be wrong there. But uh, I think the guys have done a, a pretty good job of bringing this into our factor. Obviously there's a fair bit of work that needs to be done, uh, texture-wise, background object-wise, but I know the guys that are, that are bringing these circuits out are working as quickly as possible so that people have basically all of the Formula E circuits to um, to race on. I much prefer this to the the, um, the Berlin circuit that was used 2015-2016. <coughs> I think this one suits car the cars, especially the Gen 2 cars, much better. Come on, I've got to catch up with these guys. At least I'm not overheating though. quicker through these sections during practice than these guys but I seem to be stuffing it up a little bit and they seem to be able to pull ahead through these sections. <coughs> Excuse me guys. Okay we're five minutes in. So um, I made some adjustments to the car since the, the, the race at Monaco. Um, up, up the preload. Um, I just thought it would help getting out of these corners a little bit quicker. I have um, increased the uh, negative toe on the front just to help with turn in here. Front cam is at 2.5, rear cam is at 1.5. That seemed to be a little bit quicker out of there then. Let's see what the gap is. <coughs> no, he's still pulling away. Oof. Right to the edge there. the throttle a little bit then to get some rotation. And my gaining guess just a little bit. And I thought we'd have a quick chat about what's happening with the what happened with the May R Factor 2 or Studio 397 update. Um, obviously the big news is that uh, 24 hours of Le Mans is coming. Um, pretty excited about that. I haven't run. Um, I used to run Enduros all the time uh, back in the day when I was racing in R Factor League Racing. I haven't run an Enduro since then, and I certainly haven't touched Le Mans since then. So I'm really, really excited about this. Um, I'm hoping, and I know that Renee has been hinting about it. Um, that there are some new cars along with this. Now, my thoughts on this are that we might see maybe a combination of things. We might see an update to the URD for GTE, uh, for GT, sorry. Um, and I would love to see them do an update to the um, you know, a model update to the Aston Martin Vantage 
to bring in the AMR car and the um, GT, uh, GT AM car. Um, I think that'll be a pretty easy um, do as long as licensing isn't an issue. Um, and I would love for them to bring in the 488 as well, but I, I don't think that that will happen. Um, I've heard people talking or read people talking about the fact that you know there is no real license agreement with Ferrari so that's a bit of a shame because all it would take is those two cars to completely fill out the the GTE roster I think uh, if we had the URD 4 GT updated as well <coughs> um, obviously it would be very nice to to see some LMP1 cars um, You've got the, the Enzo Nismo, you've got uh, Toyota. Um, it'd be cool to see those, especially Toyota being as that's a hybrid. So, I'm very excited about that. I'll, uh, I'll definitely run... Oh no, I've completely lost it. Um, I'll definitely run an Enduro on the channel. I may even take part in an actual <laughs> online multiplayer one. I think that'll be pretty cool. And that was really it for the um, that was really it for the update for May. Um, I guess Le Mans was kind of something they were keeping under their hats, so it's a pretty beefy announcement. Um, obviously, didn't mention the cars, but it's been hinted at um, on Twitter. So hopefully, it does happen, um, and hopefully. It is those, for me anyway, it is those uh, those GTEs. I'm not too fussed on the uh, LMP2s. Um, I guess it would be nice to see the LMP1s, it would fill out the field properly. But I'd be more excited about seeing that GTE grid fill out. Um, I haven't really run the GTEs on the channel. Um, it's not because I don't like them, they're actually some of my favourite cars in R Factor 2. Um, it's just, uh, and, I, and I run them offline all the time. It's just I haven't actually got around to just doing a video on them. I typically run the uh, 911 RSR. Okay. Okay, we're halfway through. time then and I held it. <clears throat> okay, I held it there too. Let's see if we can uh, make this stick. I think I've got the right engine mapping anyway um, to stop it from overheating and I think it must be the same that the AI are running. It's just that I've got to be quicker through these sections, especially this one here because they really seem to pull ahead there. Okay, I think I got that right then. Because it's done a pretty good job with the surface, it um, gives you a lot of feedback as you'd expect, being a, an old airport. Yes, got that right too. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. this right, I might have an opportunity next lap. Let's see if we make this a Jag one too. The track seems to perform pretty well too, I'm not noticing any kind of um, glitches or lockups, and there's certainly no hidden track ob objects so far, so I think guys have done a pretty good job with this. 
just wish that the uh, the advertisement barriers weren't quite so um, clean. Okay, come on, come on, come on. we get it clean through here and we don't okay we're gaining on him each lap that's good so don't crack under pressure Did I get him cleanly? Yes, I did. Whew. Okay, let's see if we can get uh, Mitch Evans here. Get a bit of clean air as well. Quicker than me through that section, obviously. Oh, that was close. I don't know what the tyres are doing. Not too bad. Got force feedback uh, set to about 80% on this car as well. Just enough to give me some actual feedback and too much to make it not feel uh, a little bit unrealistic. Oh, that was close. Difficulty with this car um, when you set your FOV um, forward. So this is on about 45, I think, from memory. Um, the way it sits and the way the wheel arches are and the mirrors, you can't really see the barriers on corner entry. So you've really got to just kind of gauge it by the the tire marks and <laughs> just hope for the best in some some of the some of the corners. Okay, we're gaining on Mitch. Probably could have cranked the. Um, preload up a little bit more I think. Tyres seem to be holding up okay. Don't know if uh, his tyres are fading at all, but I seem to be gaining a lot quicker on him than I was on, on Massa. Oh, he pulled away a little bit there on that corner. pulled away there. Just not quick through that section. I don't think I'm going out wide enough on the first entry. So I almost clipped that uh, that inside barrier then. Keep it together, keep it together. It's 
This is where I'm going to lose out, I think. Okay, come on. Let's keep it out wide this time. Okay, that was a little bit quicker, I think. Okay, what's the time remaining? Two minutes. Keep it together. Don't be silly. Just remember my markers. Ooh. Seem to. Oh wow, mass is caught up as well. Might not be a. Uh, might not be a jag one too. Come on. Couple of laps left. Ooh. Oh no 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 no! Ran super wide then. Come on. Whew. The, uh, I think the tyre texture build-up needs to a little bit, be a little bit um, more aggressive here. The rubber ring seems to be pretty light on. Okay, let's see if we can stay alive for this last lap. Get a decent run through this first turn. Total brain fade now that I'm not following somebody. Go, 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 come. <clears throat> so I think I need to complete this lap and another lap. And they're still there and there's still a prime pressure. Come on. You know what I would love, just as I'm thinking about it, I would love for Fanatec or Fanatic to, depending on where you live, to make this wheel, this Formula E wheel under license, I think would be an awesome addition. I don't know whether they would do something with a screen that size though. Oh, we've done it. Whew. Wow, that was awesome. That was awesome. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, if you did, hit the like button. Give it a thumbs up, sorry. Um, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and I'll be sure to upload more content soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye.